In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about regulation of TCA cycle. Now the first thing about this TCA cycle is that, that it is very disciplined cycle. Now what is the meaning of this disciplined cycle? It means that TCA cycle is remain under very well regulation even in the absence of any other regulatory molecule. That means TCA cycle has a capacity to regulate itself. Here I am not saying that outside molecules are not there to regulate TCA cycle. Of course they are there. But what I am saying is that even if these outside molecules are not present, at that time also TCA cycle remains well under regulation. So in this video, I will first discuss about this self-regulation of the TCA cycle and then I will discuss that how outside molecules regulate TCA cycle by tweaking its enzyme activities. Right. So first over here, I had shown you overall reactions of the TCA cycle. In the TCA cycle, what happens is that acetyl portion of this acetyl coenzyme A, it undergoes complete oxidation and its both carbon are oxidized to two carbon dioxide molecule. And along with this complete oxidation, energy is released. And this energy is released in the form of three NADH molecule, one FADH2 molecule and one ATP molecule. Now the problem is that that intracellular concentration of NAD plus is very very low. That means this NADH must regenerate this NAD plus and this process is the oxidation process. And this oxidation is carried out by electron transport chain. So along with this reoxidation of NAD plus electron transport chain it will carry out phosphorylation. So ADP gets phosphorylated with inorganic phosphate and it gets converted to ATP, right. So that is how our TCA cycle is linked with the electron transport chain. Now if we think that when cell is under energy rich state, energy rich state, there are several indicators inside the cell which suggest about the energy richness. So these indicators are increase NADH concentration and increase ATP concentration. These both are energy rich indicator of the cell. Now let us see what will happen when NADH concentration is higher. So when NADH concentration is higher, it means that this NADH is formed from the NAD plus. So NAD plus will be utilized. So that will lead to decrease in the concentration of NAD plus. So what will happen? See NAD plus is one of the substrate for the TCA cycle. So if substrate is low, then TCA cycle will not able to work. So this will lead to decrease in the activity of TCA cycle. The same thing will happen when ATP is more. See over here, if ATP is more, that means it is synthesized from the ADP. So accordingly, ADP's concentration will be decreased. So if ADP concentration is decreased, that means electron transport chain is decreased and that means less NAD plus is generated. So it will again lead to decrease NAD plus. So it will ultimately lead to decrease TCA cycle activity, the same effect as we had seen in the NADH. Now think logically, see cell is under energy rich state, that means cell has a enough energy and TCA cycles main purpose is energy production. So logically when cell is under energy rich state, TCA cycle should be inhibited and exactly the same thing is happening. So here there is no any tweaking of the enzyme activity. TCA cycle itself is making sure that when energy is not required at that time it should stop, right. So here we can see the discipline of TCA cycle. Let us think about energy poor state, energy poor state. What are the energy poor indicator of the cell? That is more of the NAD plus concentration and more of the ADP concentration. So these both are the energy poor indicator of the cell. Now let us see what will happen when NAD plus concentration is higher. So if NAD plus concentration is higher, that means more substrate is available for the TCA cycle. So of course now TCA cycle will undergo uninhibited, right? So that will lead to increase TCA cycle activity. What about ADP? See if ADP co concentration is more than that, that means substrate for the electron transport chain is enough. So that will lead to enough number of NAD plus and that will make sure that enough activity of the TCA cycle is there, again leading to same outcome that is increased TCA cycle activity. Here also logic remains same, 
cell is under energy poor state, cell is starving for the energy. So, this increased TCA cycle activity will make sure that enough energy is provided to that. So, here in this both mechanism, we had seen that TCA cycle without depending on any other outside molecule, it will get regulated, right. Now, the next point that we will see is that how outside molecules, they regulate TCA cycle by tweaking its enzyme activity. So, in this TCA cycle, there are three important regulatory step. One is the citrate synthase, second is the isocitrate dehydrogenase and third one is the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. These three enzymes of the TCA cycles, they are the regulatory checkpoints for the TCA cycle. Now, we see that TCA cycle, it synthesizes NADH, one NADH over here, second NADH over here and third NADH over here. So, NADH, we can consider it as a one of the product of TCA cycle and this NADH is the very powerful regulator of the TCA cycle. Why it is powerful? Because it affects all these three enzyme activity, this citrate synthase, this isocitrate dehydrogenase as well as alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex and it inhibits all these three enzymes. So, because of that, it is very powerful regulator of TCA cycle. Now, let us look at this citrate synthase enzyme. See, citrate synthase enzyme, it is the first step of the TCA cycle. And along with the first step, it is also irreversible step. So, maximum regulation occurs at this level, at the citrate synthase level. Now, citrate synthase enzyme, its substrate is oxaloacetate and its product is citrate. This substrate oxaloacetate it stimulates citrate synthase activity and its product that is citrate, it inhibits citrate synthase activity. So, we can see citrate synthase is one of the classical example where substrate act as an activator and product act as an inhibitor. Now, along with these three regulatory reactions, this citrate synthase, its far product is the succinyl coenzyme A. This succinyl coenzyme A, it is also inhibitor of this citrate synthase activity. Next is the isocitrate dehydrogenase. We had already seen that NADH is a inhibitor of isocitrate dehydrogenase. Now, along with that, ATP is also allosteric inhibitor of isocitrate dehydrogenase. This ATP, if you remember, it is indicator of energy rich state. Now, ATP's counterpart that is ADP, which is an indicator of energy poor state it stimulates this isocitrate dehydrogenase. What about this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex? So, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, as we had already seen, it is inhibited by NADH plus its product that is succinyl coenzyme A, it also inhibits alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. Now, apart from this molecule, calcium is very unique ion which can regulate the TCA cycle activity. See, when skeletal muscle, they undergo contraction, what happens? There is a release of calcium ion. So, there will be increased concentration of the calcium ion whenever skeletal muscle undergo contraction. And this calcium ion, it is a powerful regulator of this isocytate dehydrogenase. It activates it and it also activates this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. So, what will happen? There will be increased activity of the TCA cycle. And so, more ATP will be synthesized and this ATP will be utilized by this skeletal muscle for its contraction. So, here skeletal muscle is making sure through the calcium ion that whenever it requires energy, it can get energy by releasing its calcium ion, right. So, this is how all these three enzymes are regulated. So, if I want to make a summary that we have a three regulatory enzyme in case of TCA cycle, one is citrate synthase. The second one is isocitrate dehydrogenase and third one is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. Now, we will summarize that what are the activators of all these three enzymes and what are the inhibitors of each of these enzymes. So, as we had initially seen, NADH is inhibitor of all three enzymes. So, let us first write it down. So, NADH is inhibitor over here, over here and over here also. Now, let us first look at the citrate synthase. So, in case of citrate synthase, 
we have only one activator that is oxaloacetate whereas we have three inhibitor one of course is the NADH second one is the citrate and third one is this succinyl coenzyme A. So we have oxaloacetate as an activator and citrate and succinyl coenzyme A both are the inhibitor. What about isocitrate dehydrogenase complex? In case of isocitrate dehydrogenase complex, we have two inhibitor, one is ATP, second one is NADH. So, NADH along with ATP, they act as a inhibitor, whereas ADP and calcium ion both act as a activator. So, we have ADP and calcium ions. What about this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex? So, in that case, we have only one activator that is calcium. So, here we have a calcium ion as an activator and we have two inhibitors. One is of course NADH which is already written and second one is its product that is succinyl coenzyme A. So, this completes our discussion about the regulation of TCA cycle. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.